be real careful. The first thing you got to make sure before you start attacking the whole thing is that is, is what? what? What is it about this problem that actually allows me to write it as a single log? Same base. Same base. I love it. Sort of like yeah, you can only combine roots if they're the same root. All right? It's the same kind of idea. Uh, but since I see they're all, I can just start attacking it. And the very first thing I've got to do is... Yeah, get the coefficients out of the way. I have no property for a log minus one third log, I, but I got property for log minus log. So I want to get all these things out of the way. Well, it's not including that. You could include the negative, but we won't. <laughs> so let's see what we mean. We get log base b. Uh, anybody include the negative? I talked about that possibility last time. Let's do it like we didn't. Alright, so we got all the coefficients back up top. And, and uh, let me just cut to the chase. What's the only thing that's going to be on the bottom of my answer? C1 third. C1 third, because it's the only one that's minus. So this will be a single log. These two, I'm going to use a property that you add, that means you must have been multiplying. And of course, that's just, you know, you're subtracting, so you must have been. <coughs> The mistake people always make is that ends up on the bottom because you think these are multiplying each other. That's negative this. Right, so it's already on the bottom. It's like to a negative power. Yes, sir. So it's kind of like the order of operations. You work from the left to the right, and that determines what goes on bottom. Yeah, and since this is representing, uh, well, you see, you, you could, since this is minus and plus, you could move this to like that. I mean, you could rearrange this and put the minuses at the end if you want to. And then everything at the end goes on the bottom. It kind of is more organizational, but it doesn't matter. To me, I always look for the negatives, and they're going to end up on the bottom. Bam. How do we feel about that? Is that decent? Okay, all right. Not too bad, right? It's not too bad. Okay. Were you trying to record yourself? Yeah. I don't think you did. Okay. It's good. Yeah. All right, guys. Let's get into four five officially. Let me remind you that the ways we've already talked about how to solve equations with exponential or logarithmic functions in them. There's two. There's two really basic ideas. Uh, one of them we've already seen earlier. If I had 9 to the 2x equals 27, uh, that's fine. Do I need to involve logarithms to solve this? No, I don't. I might even ask you on the test, solve this without using logarithms. Right? You could, it totally would work. But you don't need to, why? They're all related to the same base, right? I can rewrite 9 as... I like it. 3 squared to the 2x, right? Because 9 is 3 squared. And 27 is? 3 cubed. This becomes? 4x. And these have to be? 4. 4x equals 3. So x equals? 3 fourths. 3 fourths. Yes. Are we cool with that? You guys see that? Now, if I just say solve it, and this is in there, you could use that line all day, or log, whatever your favorite log of them is. If you haven't picked one yet, pick one. That's what you have series. Uh, <laughs> what if I add this? To, we've seen this kind of equation already. Um, and this is barely an equation, I would call it. How do I solve that? Yeah, just change it into exponential form, right? So I get 3 to the negative 2. So x is 3 to the negative 2, which is 1 ninth to gas. Nobody better write negative 9. That shit don't belong here. Get that shit out of here. Alright, maybe. Alright, so let's get into more interesting equations. Those are too easy. I would never see that, Jeff. That's too bad. I said it already. So, how would you solve? Uh, I think we already did some of this. 
Let's use some ugly bases. 11, 4, 11, 11. Yeah, you can use any ln you any ln you like, any log you like. Ln and log are the ones we want to use because they're actually in the calculator. You could actually use log base eleven, rewrite this in log base eleven, because then you can use change of base formula, right? But what, what's normally done is you just attack this thing, and, and normally we use ln. This is one less letter. It truly is the reason. So then you get what happens to this guy. You can bring it down. Now this is still relatively new to people, so you think you can do more than you really can. Sometimes people will, I don't know, this is not a good example for this, but somehow the two will go in there and make it 22 or something. All right? You can't break into an LN. This is a number. You can't break into it, do something to a part of it. You can't do that. But, uh, of course, what do I want to do? Divide both sides by... Yeah, yeah divide by that number. I like it. So now I've almost got x by itself. Add one. Yeah, yeah add one. And divide by two. So x equals all this ungodly mess. That'll be one version of the answer I want to see. On the test, I'm going to say, give me the exact answer and give me an approximation to three decimal places or whatever, whatever I decide to do. That's the exact answer. You can't be any more precise than that. Any decimal you give me is automatically wrong in some way. It's just an approximation. So let's see if you guys, what is the approximation? This is the exact answer. What's the approximation? Okay. Exact answer does not mean give me more decimals. Because if you want to go that way, then you must give me all of the infinitely many decimal places there is. And I don't think you want to go that way. You don't have that much time for the test. Mm -hmm. 543. 543? Okay, cool. Sure, man. And from the very beginning, 149 is close to what number that 11 likes? 121. 121. And, and 11 squared is 121. So when is 2x minus 1 equal to 2? Do you guys see where I'm coming up with this stuff? So I can approximate what the answer is going to be. And of course, that's equal to 2 when x is about 3 and a half, or 3 halves. 1 and a half. And that's exactly what we got. You know, that's approximately what we got for the answer. So I can estimate what the answer is going to be, just like we did earlier. All right, maybe. Maybe. Now, we've seen stuff like that even, I think, if I remember correctly. Have we seen something like this here? That is gross. That is some serious shit. That is truly disgusting. But do that. Do it. Can we solve it? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Do it. Do it now. You can do it. You can do it. Anything you apply your math. This problem really, really ugly is the bookkeeping. Do not replace your LNs with decimal numbers anywhere in the whole problem until the very, very, very end.
maybe have you guys gone through this enough to see? I mean, you can totally do it. I'm going to give you a little suggestion as to how to do it a little bit better. Because what you have to do, you have to bring this through. You could divide it, but then you have to bring the ratio through that one. You know, you have to bring it through somewhere. So then you get 3x ln 4.9 plus 5 ln 4.9 equals 2x ln 1472 minus ln 1472. Shit. Is that what we're supposed to do? Totally. That's what you have to do. <laughs> now, now watch, now watch, now watch. If you had this, we've seen this before. Stay with me now. We've seen something like this before. How do you solve for x? You've got to get all your x stuff together, and to be able to move them around, you've got to first distribute the y, right? And actually, for us, this would be like, uh, you, now watch what you could do. Right at this step, you can define a to be ln of 4.9. Why can you do that? Because what is ln of 4.9? I don't have a freaking clue, so let me call it a. A is a lot less to have to carry around with you guys. Understand? Yeah. So you can use this kind of like middle of the problem substitution anytime you want to, as long as in the end you replace A with what the hell it is. Because you give that shit to me, I'm like, what the hell is that? B would be. Now it looks a little bit better. That looks better than that. All right? Yeah, so now you bring in your a, 3xa plus 5a equals 2xb minus b. Now, why the hell do I do all that? If I'm trying to solve for x, I have to get all my x stuff on one side. I'm going to go this way so that my stuff is positive. Is that cool? Sure. I'd rather do that. So I can add b and subtract 3xa. Let me stop there for a second. You guys with me? You don't have to do the a, b thing if you don't want to. It just kind of makes it easier to look at in the middle of the problem. <coughs> I'm almost there now. There weren't really two x's. I realize now there was only one x, right? There is no space. So what, what do I do here? Take an x out. You know, factor an x out like. And then you divide by the stuff you don't want. Mmm, yummy. Now you bring back in, what's A? Oh. B, ln of 1472, that sounds like a history problem. 2 times B, <coughs> bless you, minus 3 times A, yummy. That's the exact answer. If you want the approximate answer, you've got to be careful to tell the calculator what's on the top, what's on the bottom. Do you guys see that? Do you guys understand? The main problem with this, it's actually relatively simple, the mechanics of it, but the main problem is bookkeeping on a problem like this. Don't even have a guess. Somebody trying this out, or am I just... Yeah. All right, thank you. We have one <laughs> possibility. <laughs> Anybody else trying it out, or are we all just wait for Tony? So you got the same thing? All right, it makes me feel pretty good. It's probability you guys made the exact same mistakes pretty low. <laughs> all right, so just make sure you get the same thing. You can always check it by just plugging it into the original equation. Right? Okay. That's probably the worst problem like that you're going to see. Alright, how are we doing so far? In fact, you probably won't see one quite that ugly in the homework. I just made one the ugliest one you've ever seen. Alright? It's like practicing with a slightly larger basketball. Alright, it's the same idea. You can make baskets with that. Shit, give me that small dude. Alright. Anybody play basketball? You know they sell slightly large basketballs for practice? Do you know that? So if you can make that, you're like, oh, well, one's easier, shit. All right, I'm sorry. I'll stop it.
Uh, there's a whole other class of equations. These are almost directly related to the fundamental idea of ln and, and exponentials. Not ln, but logs. Uh, well, there's a little side class. Let me do this first before we do the absolutely new stuff. Um, what do we have this here? Still in four five. Oh yeah, this bad boy is chock a block. What property can I use? Because if it was just that, it would be easy as hell, right? If it was a single logarithm, I could do it no problem. But there's two. But they're subtracting. So how do I rewrite that? Log three x minus one over Kick ass, because you divide, you must be dividing to subtract the powers. Now how do I rewrite it? Three to the first equals x minus one over x. Do you guys see that? So if that would have been a two, this would have been a nine. You're just doing three to the power equals the inside. That's how I rewrite logarithms. And that's the fundamental way you solve equations with logs in them. You try to get it all together into one log and then rewrite it. Because then you kill the log. How do I solve that? Yeah, just multiply the x up. 3x equals x minus 1. Oh, it's way too easy to believe. Subtract the x. See, it's way too easy to do. Divide by 2, you get x equals negative 1 half. Now, remember, logarithms are a lot like radicals. And one other way they're the same way is you've got to check the answer because their domains are free. Would that make anything in my original equation freak out? What's the only kind of things I can plug in here? They must be what? Positive. What answer do we get? And this must be positive. And we got... So what happens? The only possible answer doesn't work, therefore, no solution. Yeah. Just like we had with, with radicals, right? We got that all the time with radicals. You got to check the answer at the end. Same thing with logarithms for the same reason, because their domain is so restrictive. Can't handle any negatives or zeros. It's got to be positive shit. If I would have gotten positive one half, would that have been okay? No. Because the other guy. Shit, Jeff, what the hell, man? Yeah, hey, you gotta check everything. You gotta make sure it doesn't freak anybody out. Just like when you have radical equations, you have to check to make sure if you got three, you wanna make sure there's no x minus three on the bottom because it'll freak out. Same thing. So at the beginning of that problem, before you even started, you could just say, oh, x has to be greater than one. Yeah, x has gotta be greater than one. Take so x. You find out, oh, Same way, I love it. Because if you had a problem like this, blah, 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 you could say x can't be negative three. So if you get negative three, you can go, oh, I knew from the beginning it could be that. I love it. So right here you can say x must be greater than 1. You get there, bam, throw it out. Either way, or just check it, plug it in and see if it freaks somebody out. How are we doing there? Are we decent? And again, it's not math's fault. Because the equation was bogus from the beginning. We just didn't know until we got there. That's where somebody should go. It's your fault, Jeff. You made the equation. All right. Shit. All right, so here's the, so that's basically the same as what we did earlier. It just starts with several logs, you combine them. So now you understand why we need that skill of combining logarithms. This is one big reason so we can solve this kind of equation. Um, let me just write this down and see what you guys think. Uh, what you got, Jeff? Sorry. E to the 2x 
2x has to equal 3x e to the 2x. True. So. But something that's a little bit. X sums. There's a 3. That actually is the one right way to do this. But what I'd rather you guys do with this is what you always do with this kind of thing, which is to factor. Now, one reason why you would be correct, I think, if you're going in that direction is because you can never divide an equation by, like, x. Or you can't divide an equation by x minus 3. Or if you do, you got to be careful because what might that be? That might be 0. So I could actually divide this thing by e to the 2x because e to the 2x is never 0. It's always positive, right? Remember, it's got an asymptote at 0. But what I'd slightly like better is for you guys to factor this bad boy. If you take an e to the 2x out, what do you have left? 1. Is e to the 2x ever equal to 0? No, you don't get an answer from that piece. But here you get x's. One third, you guess. So it's fine if you do it that way. But I kind of like this way, but either way, you can divide by the e because it's never equal to zero. I love it. You guys see that? Yes. So what gives you the right to just take out that e to x and just like get rid of it? How are you, how are you allowed to do that? All right, watch this. Uh, re recall. How would you solve that? Factor x squared out. And then what? Set each one equal to 0. That actually gives me an answer, because if x is 0, that piece is 0. But this didn't give me an answer. Now again, I want you to understand, too, Morgan's point, which is perfectly fine. You could divide from the very beginning. Well, you could pull this over, but you could divide by e to the 2x. Why can you do that? Because it never equals 0. If you divide by something that could equal 0, you might be losing an answer. So, for example, uh, this equation. If you divide by x. Well, let's see. Let me make it a little bit easier looking. If you divide by x, you get 4 equals x. But you lost an answer. You totally lost an answer. Do you, guess you, do you guess see what's the answer I lost? Zero. I lost the answer of zero. Do you see? So, so not only can you not divide by because it could equal zero, but if you do, you're losing in a possible answer. But this e to the 2x is never zero. You can just divide by. It's like a 7. I can divide by 7 all day long. Right? I may... So there's a whole class like that. Yes, sir. Um, for the uh, for the problem that you actually just erased, how come when I plug it into the cap or how come when I uh, plug it into the calculator like as log as the like, whole change of base, it still equals one. Like it doesn't say no solution. Oh, oh. that makes sense. Uh, what was it? It was uh, log base three of x minus one over x. Yeah. Okay. Let's check out the chase. Equals one, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, what did you do? I'm sorry. I did a change of base where it's log of <coughs> x minus 1 over x divided by log of 3. Oh, real quick. When I plug that, you ready? You ready? You ready? The answer was negative 1 half, right? The only possible answer, and that was bogus. If you throw a negative 1 half in here, the top is negative, the bottom is negative. The negatives cancel. But, but this is after I've done something. So, I, the negatives would cancel. So it thinks the log will work, but this is not the original equation. That's why you always check your work in the original equation. At this point, we've already done something. We've done something that changed things. Legally, but it's sort of like when I solved this. If I didn't notice, the easy answer is no solution. I just square both sides. There are answers to this. And I've had people, when they check the answer, they'll plug it in here, but then they'll square, and they'll go, oh, it works. No, you squared, so of course it works. You lost information about the fact that it used to be negative. So when you rewrite this, the ratio kills the negatives. Oh, shit, you've lost information that those used to be negative. So I like that you're saying that, but it's because you're checking at too late of a stage. You have to check it in the very beginning. 
Because the minute you start doing stuff, that's what introduced the, the answer. That, that's why I got an answer, because this ratio would come out positive. So math's like, hey, there's an answer, dude. And we're like, oh shit, we didn't start there. Me? Oh, maybe, maybe, yeah. I thought you were doing Archer. Me? You want a fried brain? This is how you get a fried brain. All right. Probably one of my favorites. My favorite favorite. I like it. So two reasons why dividing by the E piece wouldn't make any sense. One is that it's not the same E piece, and the other is one of them doesn't have an E piece. <coughs> Alright, so there must be some other way to do this. And does somebody notice what form this is in? It's quadratic form. You can totally factor this all day long. E to the two X. So what goes here and there? Wouldn't that become e to the 2x when you multiply them? Because yeah. you add the powers when you multiply like faces, right? Yeah. And of course, how do I make negative 6 to negative 1? Kick okay, ass. So either e to the x equals 3, or e to the x equals. Alright, you guys see? This is a whole other class of problem where you can factor. It's not a GCF. The GCF problems are nice. It's not a GCF problem. You've got to realize it's quadratic. E to the x in place of x. Yes, sir. So e to the x equals negative 2 wouldn't technically you, have that. So which one of these is bogus? This guy. Because e to the x can't even get to 0, let alone to the negatives, right? So this is bogus. doesn't give me any answers. Uh, undefined, no solution, whatever you want to call it. This one, I get an answer. What's the exact answer? How do I get an answer to this? No, 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 no. I don't have an answer yet. How do I get an answer? Yeah, ln. Cool. So x equals ln3. And then it can give me an approximate answer. All right. Bless you. I saw it coming. Do you, guys, do you guys see that? Are you guys with me on that? Mm -hmm. All right. So here, you guys try this one. While you guys are doing that, I'm going to pass out the practice test.
that right? Okay, 3 minus 8 is negative 5, negative 6, cool. Of course, you know how you get it, uh, negative 24, negative 8, 3, break it up, grouping, however you get there, as long as it's the legal one. <coughs> Which one of these leads to bogus answer? Yeah, this one, because when I pull it over, negative 3, E the X can never do that, so I don't have to worry about this guy, so E the X equals 2, so X is... Kick ass. Alright, so I'm officially making section 4, 6 extra credit. I'll be sure to post that up online and make it worth zero points. So you can still do it and I can still see how many you got right and give you extra credit based off of that. Mm -hmm. Textbook, you can do 4, 6 homework, extra credit, or you can just not do it. Yes? So the points to be on the test? As a bonus question. Okay. Yeah. So that's a good reason to try it out. Yeah, because you subtract three, right? And then the EX can't be negative. Wednesday. Yeah. 